Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, let's play The Deed. My name is Weasel, and we're going to try to get away with murder. <sighs> Last episode was really interesting. All the choices and the decisions I made really changed what happened in the game, and I kind of want to try to get away with murder this time. It might take me a few attempts, but you guys seem to be really intrigued by it. So am I. So we're going to start a new game and see if we can pull it off. I will be trying to be the most... Unsuspicious. Insuspicious? Ins I don't even know. I'm gonna skip the intro since we already know how it starts. Um, and we're going to behave like the nicest person ever. Good evening, Mr. Aaron. May I take your code? Um, well, I'm not gonna flirt with her this time. Of course. Yes, I will be the nicest person. Of course. Yes, take this blasted wet thing off me. You're, the, you're new, aren't you? Sophia is my name. I recognize you from your pictures, Mr. Oran. I'm not new exactly. I've been employed by your family for almost a year. It's just that you've never been visited before. What are you trying to say? I've been busy. My work keeps me very busy, unfortunately. I understand. I've been away from my family a lot since I started this job. You're here now, and I'm sure you're eager to meet with the others. Your father's in the library on your left, and your mother's on the parlor, which is onto your right. Your sister's upstairs in a room, I think. Um... I know though my way around my own damn house. Thank you. Thank you for your help, Sophia. You're very welcome, Mr. Aaron. I will be in the kitchen preparing dinner. I'll sound the bell when dinner is served. Okay, so let's talk to Daddy. Last time we talked to him. Hi, even now the family must smell your father's library. Fills you with dread as you step inside. You may have too many bad memories of this room. I want to frame Dad this time and I'll take the taw or whatever it is. And I'll murder her with the bare hands. I think it's only evidence, but I'll try bare hands and then put his taw. Um, I guess maybe not in the same room, but uh, in... Um a different room. We'll, we'll hide it. Anyways, let's see what we can do. Hey, Dad. Hello, Father. Your father remains silent for several moments and a chill seems to pass through the library. Okay. You told me you'd never enter this house again, boy. Why are you here? To see you, of course, Father. Happy birthday. It's obvious why I'm here. I want to put all that unpleasantness behind us and wish you a happy 50th birthday. Happy? You honestly think this is a happy day for me? Another day when I can watch my life's work crumble into nothing. Another day to see our bloodline slit its own throat. You know how to make me happy. Move back to Dunjil, take your proper place, and do your damn duty. You have to let me live my own life. I refuse to move back here and suffer your abuse. I will consider if, you, if my sister is put into care. Um, you know what? I will consider if my sister is put into care. It's actually not bad because... You won't have to let me live my own life. You know what? That seems very friendly, but she should be put into care. I should be wor I should be concerned about her. Um, yes, let's do that. If I were back to Dunchill, I would have certain expectations. Yes, refuse to suffer your daily insults, and the sister needs to be put in care. You would like that, you obnoxious little shit, selling at your own blood. These are my terms. Well, you know what you can do with your terms. You're the same snot-nosed bread you always were. Okay, this time... If you can't be civil, I will take my leave. I can't see you're determined to be impossible. I think we had better end this discussion now. You're impossible one boy as always, but I think you're probably right about one thing. This conversation is pointless and now it's over. Get out of here. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll grab grab your thing. You'll be, you'll be framed, buddy. When your father isn't looking, you quietly open the top drawer of the desk and take a look inside. It seems to be filled with his memorabilia. One of the items sends a shiver for your bones. The cruel leather taws. Yes, take the leather taws. Yes, yes, I'm sure I want that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, we'll be out of here. And I'll be placing that eventually once I get my murder weapon, which is going to be, I think, my bare hands, unless I find something really neat. All right, let's talk to Mother. Let's be friendly and uh, tell her that I'm worried about that or something like that. Oh, yeah, right. Hi, Mother. Please sit down if you want to talk properly. All right, I will be sitting down. So, Aaron, you finally managed to make it up here for a visit. I'm here to make amends. No, mother, I'm not here to cause trouble. Quite the opposite. Oh? Our family has been dysfunctional for a long time, and I have to take some responsibility for that. For what it's worth, I apologize for any stress that my behavior has caused you over the years. I see. You'll forgive me if I'm a little bit skeptical about the sudden change of your attitude, Aaron. However, if we can get through today without any drama, then I would appreciate it. Have you been up to see your sister yet? She's been going through an unusually difficult time. <sighs> Will she be okay? You sound worried. Do you think it's serious? Yes. Yeah. Remember that summer when she with the razor in the bathroom? Yes, I remember. That was the last time I remember seeing her like this, so yes, I'm worried. Anyway, you should go and talk to your father. 
All right, I'll talk to my dad and wish him a happy birthday. I already did, kind of. That freaking music. All right, then. Um, I don't want to cause any suspicion. We're going to go downstairs. I wonder where my butler friend is. This dusty old wine cellar. He must be down here somewhere. All right, I think it's the butler. Hi, butler. That is his room. Right. Oh, hello, sir. What can I do for you? You seem quite distressed about something. I do? Well, I'm sure it's nothing you should trouble yourself about. Your concerns are my concerns. Come on, George. We know each other many years. If something's troubling you, I want to hear about it. If you insist, sir. Ever since the new maid arrived, I feel like I'm being nudged towards early retirement. She's obviously being trained to become the new housekeeper. She's taking over my responsibilities one by one. Oh, my. I have an idea. I've tried discussing the matter with your mother, but it's no use. She hasn't been herself lately either. But please don't trouble yourself about it, sir. I probably shouldn't have said anything at all. So this new maid is something of a bully then? Hmm. The new maid is quite domineering then. She didn't seem that way to me. She is subtle in her ways. But mark my words, she wants to be running this house. Perhaps it's not a coincidence that your sister's mental health has become worse since Sophia arrived. I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary yet, but I have my suspicions. She's as cold as a heartless woman as I've ever known. I should say no more. Please excuse me, sir. Hmm, that might be interesting. Maybe we're going to place uh, the leather thingy in his room. You can go rummaging through his drawers while he's watching you. Yeah, that, that, that does make sense. We'll be putting something in there. I'll have to run down after I kill the sister and plant the evidence real quick. That's going to be really tricky. I don't know if I can pull that off in like nine seconds. Might be impossible. This is the groundskeeper cupboard. George seems to have left it open. Among the various household tools, you spot a thin length of rope. Strangulation is certainly tried and tested method of murder. Ooh. Take the rope. Oh, yeah. You want to take the rope? Remember, you can only pick two objects. Yes, I'm sure. You take the length of rope and hide it on your purse, and this will be useful when the time comes. Okay, now it's dinner time, uh, where we can make some other choices. Again, the bell invites me this time to dinner, it seems. Okay. Dinner served. Mmm, yes. That was a quick, quick rundown for you here. Sophia, could you come here for a moment? So my idea is I'm going to strangle her with the rope, uh, and I hope I can place that... Um, Somewhere useful. Yes, ma'am. Pour me some more wine. Yes, ma'am. But madam. Oh, what is it, George? Yes, he wants to pour the wine. I must protest. It was always been my duty to pour the wine at dinner. Oh, well, I don't want to cause any trouble. Nonsense. What does it matter, George? Stop being overly pedantic. Okay. We're going to have to, like, cause trouble here. So it seems that he wants to kill her. Um, bub, 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 don't you think you had enough, mother? Do you, let, do you let the staff speak to you like that? He just wants to look down your dress. Come on, let George pour the wine. Don't you think you had enough, mother? Hmm. Okay, that's if I want to frame her, if I want to make a remark about that. Uh, do you let the staff speak to you like that? It's probably interesting. Yeah, let's, let, let's point out that he's been out of line. Are you going to let George get away with this disobedience, mother? Of course not. You and I will have words after dinner, George. Yes, madam. Let your mother deal with it, would you? We don't need your interference. An interfering little rat, isn't he, daddy? Yes, he is. Why can't you ever keep your mouth shut, boy? Uh, perhaps I did speak out of turn. I apologize. Not now. Don't lose your temper, father. That would be perfect to frame him. Perhaps I did speak out of turn. I apologize. You're right. I'm sorry. I must have had too much wine myself. You'd better not let it happen again. Sophia, could you come here, please? Yes, Miss Jennifer. I just wanted to say that was the loveliest meal I ever tasted. I don't know how to you do it. You cunning pixie. You are too kind, miss. Of course, I will have tea and cakes ready in the drawing room. You're so very good to me. Not for me, I'm full. I wouldn't mind some of your hot cakes, but you two stop flirting with each other. Sophia isn't interested in your advanced sister. Hmm. That would be an interesting one if I want to uh, get her to uh, to point to suicide. That might be an interesting one. Anyway, I'm going to just say, none for me, I'm full. I won't have any, thank you. I couldn't eat another bite. Well, you weren't offered any, so there. Please, Jennifer, let's all try to be civil. Anyway, let's not forget why we're here today to celebrate your father's birthday. Such a very important occasion. You're so dear to us, Malcolm. Happy birthday, Daddy. Indeed, happy birthday. Let's hope it will be one to remember. Oh, it will be one to remember. Don't you worry about that. Doing the deed. Now it's time to quickly plant any items of evidence you have to do so. Simply enter the desired room. Okay. So, I want to put the leather thingy into his room. Hopefully, I can pull it off. Don't mind me. You just stand on your cupboard. I'm going to place the um, my father's thingamajig in here. Hopefully that works. Let's see. Uh, bup, 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 bup. I need an item. Items. The taws. 
Yes. Yup. Do you want to plant this item in this room? Yes, I do. We're gonna hide it here. Plant the incriminating item here. Can I also plant the weapon here? Ah, uh, you may need it. Okay. So since it's not evidence, I'm going to strangle it. It is from the cupboard of the... From his cupboard. From George's cupboard. And also I put something in his room. So maybe we can frame the butler. He's been out of place. George seems to be busy sorting for the items. Perhaps he has noticed that something is missing. Well, maybe. Maybe he has. But that's that's none of his concern. Are you sure you want to enter the drawing room? Once inside, there's no turning back. You know what? I would like to talk to mother first. Maybe I can uh, create some more suspicion towards George. Like, talk to her about it. Your mother's listening to her music. You know better than to disturb her. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Let's just, let's just strangle the woman. Are you sure you want to enter the drawing room? Once you go back, there's no turning. You see Jennifer staring out the window ahead of you, lost in one of her strange moods. She has noticed you enter the drawing room. Now is the time. Yes, I'm gonna use the rope on her. Holding the rope in both hands, you creep up behind your sister and pull the noose over her head. She gasps and begins to struggle, but you hold on tight around her neck. Oh yes, it takes some time before she finally goes limp. You let her drop to the floor with the rope still around the neck. Okay, before we go out of this, we gotta think where we run, where we're going to stay. How about I'm going to run up to my room? If I can pull it off, that would be fantastic. Someone might have heard the sound of that struggle. It's time to get out of this room. Okay. I don't have a whole lot of time left. Okay, go up here real quick. Okay, we can reach our room. That's like the furthest away from everything. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Two, one. Okay, we made it in. We are in a room. You step inside your former bedroom, now a simple guest room. Yes. It sounds like my deed has been discovered. Okay, let's hope that this time we might we might get away with it. It would be so cool. Let's see. We did things quite differently, so I'm curious where this was gonna lead. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Chief Inspector Winston Lewis. Understand difficult time. Yes, so you're damn right it is. I want to know what you're doing wasting time in here with my daughter's killer still out there. Well, Mr. Bruce, we have found the evidence of forced entry. It would seem entirely impossible that when the killers uh, that the killer's in this room. That seems highly unlikely, Inspector. Perhaps it is. In order to follow protocol, I will have to interview each of you in turn. Mr. Bruce, would you like me in the library first? Uh, Mrs. Bruce. The interview. Thank you for joining me in here, Mr. Bruce. I'm sure this won't take long. Before we begin, I will need to search a person. Best to get those formalities out of the way. Is this really necessary? I'm afraid so. Turn around, please. Hmm. Now that's out of the way. Let's move on to the interview. I don't know what's going on with the rope. If I if I still hold the rope until my person? But we'll see, I guess. As you know, I've already spoken to everyone who else was present in the uh, house at the time of your sister's death. We also completed our initial search, but we'll get to that later. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? First of all, we will run through all of your activities since your arrival. Mate says that you and the butler arrived shortly after 7 o'clock and she greeted you at the door. Later on, you had a conversation with your mother. She told me that you were an unusually cordial something about wanting to apologize and make amends. Um, that was a private conversation. I was being sincere. Um, That was a private conversation. I don't wish to comment on a private conversation with my mother. I must advise you to be cooperative, Mr. Bruce. Your advice is noted, but my position stands very well then. She says you spoke briefly about your sister. Apparently, you seem to be quite concerned about her well-being. Um, Actually, I wasn't especially concerned. I was more worried about my mother's mental state. Uh, we were worried my sister might attempt suicide. I was more worried about my mother's mental state. I wasn't especially concerned. I wasn't that concerned, really. I was tired of hearing about my sister's complaints. I find that attitude quite surprising, Mr. Bruce. I, I can't point out, like, that I thought she would do suicide. That's too obvious. You went to see your father in the library. I understand your conversation became quite heated. <sighs> Actually, I thought a conversation was civil. I thought a conversation was civil. I didn't think it was that heated. Really, apparently even your mother could hear raised voices from the parlor. You discussed the prospect of your moving back to Dunshield. He said you would only move back if your sister was placed into psychiatric care. Um, yes, I wanted her gone from this house. Given our relationship, I wasn't going to move back while she was still here. I see, so you had a reason to want her gone. Damn it, that doesn't mean I killed her. Of course not, of course not. Let's discuss your discussion with the butler. I understand you spoke about the new maid. The butler seemed to have some concerns about her. Uh, he told me that the new maid is a bully. Bully. He was only concerned with what's under her dress. He was just afraid of his impending retirement. Yeah, let's let's point that out. He was paranoid that the maid was going to take his place, which was obviously true. He's almost at retirement age after all. Yes, I understand. Do you speak to your sister before dinner? 
No, I did not. No, I didn't see Jennifer until dinner. Very well, then. Let's move on to the events that took place during dinner. There was some trouble involving the butler, I gather. Apparently, you were offended by his behavior. Uh, I just had a little too much to drink. Servants really ought to know their place. Oh, my. Hmm, I don't remember that. Hmm, I just had a little too much to drink. Huh. I don't remember that. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let's go with servants really ought to know their place. I'm not entirely sure what, which one is better, but I'll try. I don't know how my family puts up with it. Servants should learn to keep their mouths shut and do as they're told. Ooh, that seems rather unfeeling. I will not apologize for having high expectations. Now, I need to ascertain your location at the time of your sister's death. Where were you when you heard the maid's scream? Oh, I should be in the room of my mother. Uh, upstairs. In your old bedroom. I was in the guest bedroom. I see, thank you. As I said earlier, we have completed our initial search of the property. The search did not turn up any items which gave me cause to suspect anyone in particular. Damn it! I'm curious about the murder weapon. The rope which was used to strangle your sister came out of the butler's cupboard, which is generally kept locked, I believe. Suicide is a possibility. She may have tried to hang herself and the rope came loose, causing her to fall to the floor. Interesting. It's all very interesting. I will be completely honest with you, Mr. Bruce. Your behavior leading up to the sister's death concerns me a great deal. Really? <sighs> Frank. There's a question or two regarding the butler, but I personally don't buy it. Too cliche. Now, as what for happens next, I'm placing you under arrest. Damn you! <sighs> Damn you again. I was placed under arrest. I was hoping I would do a better job this time to go through there. I remained the prime suspect, and the evidence was overwhelming. Life sentence. And in my dang little cell, there was nowhere to hide or escape the memories and nightmares. <sighs> the deed itself had taken possession of her soul. Well, this didn't go according to plan at all. We gotta figure out something else. Maybe I'm just gonna shoot her straight up with a shotgun and uh, go to another room or something. We'll, we'll figure it out. I mean, maybe I can maybe I can go do a suicide here. Might be possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please have a like. In the next one, we're gonna try something completely different or at least switch it up. I hope you guys will join me for that. In any case, I'm Weasel. I'm out and I hope to see you around. Bye-bye. Yeah, we got some, some stores here. Nothing fancy. The Quiet Corner Shop. General store, convenience store. How's the building doing? Yeah, I, I, I know. The general store already normally. They're all very happy. Very happy. Did I put your own in the business on the other side? Surprisingly, I can't. I wonder why. I wonder if it's the, um... If it's the electrical thingy.